Hello and welcome to another edition of Proto Balls Talk. I'm Proto Met. This is Motorcycle Balls, and no, this is not Proto Met tries. <laughs> yeah, before uh, before this recording, I almost called this show uh, Proto Met tries just out of accident. But today, because see, see, for an offense like that, I would have had to kick you in the knee. <laughs> Except this is my channel. <laughs> ah, shit! <laughs> you would have kicked me in the knee. <laughs> Yes. That would be hurting. <laughs> Today we will be covering Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin 4. I'm actually trying to remember what the name of it is. <laughs> I got you, fam. Say no more. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam. Eve of Destiny. <laughs> Eve of Destiny. I guess. I completely forgot what it was called. Yes, Eve of Destiny. Oh, which doesn't look good for this movie now, does it? If I can't even be bothered to remember the this title. This came out four years ago. Yeah. Or yeah. almost four, since yeah. we're in 2020 now. Yeah. Nice. Uh, so yeah, as you can tell by the by the by our tone with regarding this movie, <laughs> we don't really have a lot to say. I, guess, I suppose, for now, let's just get to the plot. I, um, I guess. Yeah. So, the movie's... <coughs> you Sorry. Okay? You okay? Ah, phlegm. You gotta die? Yes. Yes, I am dead. You gonna, you gonna I, get, I am not even dying. I you am getting dead. That, you getting that coronavirus? Yes. Shit. And I don't even drink. <laughs> don't... Did you know they changed... They actually changed their name to Ebola. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, the movie starts off pretty soon after the previous one ended with a parade for the uh, the recruits for the for the academy recruits who staged the coup, the rebellion. They give them a parade, even honor the dead, and the Federation ain't too happy about this because they want Garma's head for this. <laughs> And so, 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 yeah, they're at a meeting. They're, they're at a meeting, the Federation and the Zobbies. And Dagwin's like, nah, you ain't taking my youngest, son. Uh, Dagwin basically uh, says, we, we'll punish the one responsible, but as for you Federation guys, get the fuck off our land. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 so he says, so Dagwin, there's a, there's a funny little bit. Because cause he's like, oh yeah, no, somebody will be punished. And all the other, all the other zombie kids, Garen and Cassilia, they all just turn to Dozel, and Dozel's like, "What? <laughs> what?" <laughs> but he, he's he's completely oblivious to the fact that he's he's the one in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So then, yeah, and then, then Dagwin's just like. Get the fuck out of here. Leave! Yeah, he tells the Federation that uh, the time for cooperation is over. They should pack their stuff and get the hell out. Yeah, and General Revels there, by the way. Yep. And he's none too pleased. As you can imagine. Yep. What happens next? <laughs> um, I'm trying to remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure, like, immediately after this, uh, Shara is brought into Dozel's office, and Dozel basically kicks him out of the academy. Oh, yeah, yeah, Dozel, Dozel has to resign. Dozel has to resign, but he kicks, he kicks Shara out of the academy, and, uh, Shara right. is going to head down to Earth, but he does ask that... Ask Dozel, if you, uh, if at any point in the future hey. you want me to come back, could I pilot those mobile suits you've been working on? Dozel's like, damn it, damn it, Garma. <laughs> it's like, I'll consider it. <laughs> Very well. Okay. <laughs> so then All right, now get out of here. And then he has another person come in. Oh, God Zena. damn it. <laughs> This is, this is like out of left field. <laughs> it is if you don't know who Zayna is. <laughs> and even then, it still kind of comes out of left field. Dozel calls Zayna in for, you know, the whole keeping him behind during the whole rebellion. Hold, holding him at gunpoint, basically. And he is upset about that. And so he decides to the best course of punishment is to ask her to marry him. So, so, I'm not even kidding. 
Yeah, <laughs> it, it's basically... Admittedly, he's not doing it as a punishment. He legitimately is impressed with Zayn and <laughs> has taken an interest in her. So he's basically like, you held, it, held me at gunpoint, and for some reason, I have the weirdest boner right now. <laughs> We know what Doza likes. <laughs> now I can only imagine what uh, the night Maneva was conceived was like. Now that you think, now that you bring that up, <laughs> hold me at gunpoint. Do it. Now yes. pull the hammer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my god. We've gone. We've gone too far, Leo. Take us back. Um, I'm honestly trying to remember what all happens next. Uh, so, some parts of this movie kind of yeah, blur together. So here's the biggest problem with this movie. The movie moves by. It's almost... Uh, it's not a, not a bad movie. But, like, let's get that out of the way. It's not a bad movie. It's certainly better than Artesia's Sorrow, in my opinion. The problem is so much stuff happens that... But there's not a whole lot of staying power for most of it. Yeah. Uh, I think there's at one point one scene where uh, Degwin pulls Garma aside and they just kind of have a father son moment, <laughs> and that's fine. It, Ooh, no, Degwin and Garma. Oh, Degwin and Garma. Yes, that's right. Degwin and Degwin and Garma have a, have a little chat, and it it makes makes Degwin out to be more humanistic than the villain because he kind of feels bad for having had Garma at such an old age not not because he views Garma as a mistake but because for some other reason that he doesn't elaborate on yeah so, Pro probably because he thinks he'll his son will outlive him by by a long stretch or that he'll <coughs> You made, you made that vibrate. <laughs> Did I? You made your door doorbell vibrate, dude. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we're we're sitting we're sitting like two feet. Yeah, we're at my editing table, and if anybody has seen uh, my uh, masked rider review over on Gamma Zalong, or the, the doorbell is right next to the editing table, or the Mobile Suit Gundam pro podcast. Oh, the first one, yeah. <laughs> Our very first podcast. <laughs> Probably are not going to get any vis visitors tonight, hopefully. But anyway. You never know. So, yeah, that happens. Um, yeah, I think, I think yeah, I think Dagwin's, Dagwin realizes he'll probably outlive Garma. <coughs> <coughs> There's no foreshadowing there. None whatsoever. No. Nope. Don't even try to th overthink it. It won't work. You're not going to find some super secret meaning, trust me. Absolutely not. So anyway, there's a... There's a what else happens? There's a scene. Uh, let's see. Um, Char goes to work down on Earth with a construction company. Well, I don't know if... Yeah, I don't know if that happens in between this, but there's a scene where... Uh, uh, what's his name? Get, is getting home from work. Oh, Tim? Yes, T Tim? Tim Ray? Tim Ray, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting home from work, and, uh... Frau is just leaving. And Frau is just like, Oh, well, you know, Amro is lonely sometimes. Maybe you should have a talk Tim kind of gives her the cold shoulder in this scene. It, it, it almost feels like he's like, How dare you question how I raise my... How I don't raise my son? How dare you question my non-ability to raise my own son? It's almost because just, he, it's he almost, it's almost I care about my work more than I do my son. How dare you insinuate that? How dare you insinuate that truth? <sighs> Amaro, why are you shirtless? He's not shirtless. He doesn't have any pants he's on. He's pantsless. He's still got, he's in his boxers. He's he's clearly not in the mood to go out. <laughs> why aren't you? Why are Put you... on some pants! Put on some pants, motherfucker! You had a lady over! <laughs> Which raises all sorts of innuendos. <laughs> but at the same time, knowing Frau, nothing happened. Nothing. <laughs> Not a damn thing. Poor Amaru. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't actually remember the exact significance of that. <laughs> There's none. Uh, other than maybe... 
It's Cam Kit. telling Amro that he's going to be working late for a good long while. He's going to the moon. Oh, right. He does go to the moon. That's he, impo- That actually is important. He, he, yeah. He's, uh, he's not going to be home for a while because he's... Tem Ray's basically been transferred to the moon. At least temporarily. That'll that'll become relevant later. We'll stick a pin in that for now. As, so, um, we, as we so love to do on this podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> We've got a cork board right here. It's completely imaginary and totally real. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Suss that one out, you nerds. <laughs> anyway, so um, Char's down on Earth working as part of a like construction like a construction or excavation company. I basically like a mining construction company. I I, I guess they they have a mobile suit uh, bulldozer, which um, a mobile dozer, mobile suit do a mobile worker dozer dozer. Just just call it a mobile dozer. A mobile dozer that actually does sound better. <laughs> That's a great name for he's, it. He's working a mobile dozer, and he's, he does a pretty fantastic job of it. Even even his coworkers are impressed. Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a the, great, the there's a great scene in this where one of his coworkers are like, "Ah, oh, those Zeon bastards." No, it's Zeonic bastards. Oh, those Zeonic bastards. Because Zeonic is the company that helped develop yeah. the mobile suit. Right. Those Zeonic bastards. With, who they're renting the uh, yeah the the mobile dozers from. So they call the guys at Zeonic bastards, and Sh- and Char is like, you know, I used to work at Zeonic in their R and D department. Total lie, by the way. Yep. Oh yeah, by the way, they are bastards. <laughs> Try tr- lying to like befriend them, I guess. I don't know. Get on their good side while at the same time obscuring his actual history. Yeah. And they decide. They decide. You know what? We've got time off. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go to the casino. And here we are introduced to some guy. Did, okay, uh, his... before that, there's a there's a scene in, in between. We I didn't I purposely didn't bring this up. Okay. But there's a there's an intermediary scene where there's a gunfight and people are shooting each other, and and this dude with it with chakrams just tosses them and kills some people. All this while well, this like... other fucking dude is dragging a girl behind him. Yep, and they jump as, the... as they run from the uh, guys shooting at them, and they jump jump out of the building into the water, get to a boat, and they escape. So back at the casino, Amaro Amaro might actually happen at the casino. No, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I can't I can't remember, but no. it happens at. Some... I, I think it, that may ha- happen after the casino. I'm pretty sure it happens before. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to take your word for it because I, my memory's Char, shit. Char's friends, they're losing money. At the... At the casino. And this dude with the girl, he's making bank. He shows up, he's like, hey, put me in a hand. I want to And it turns out the girl is actually helping him until they reach a certain point, at which point uh, her ability which, to help him completely fails and he loses all... He loses that bank. <laughs> So, yeah, so what happens is, what happens is that he's winning, and he's winning, and he's winning, and then they switch. They uh, switch, they switch, uh, dealers. Dealers, it's roulette, so dealers doesn't quite work. They change spinners. They change spinners, and so, somehow this throws the girl off. I, I, the way I think, I'm thinking is, it, it has to deal with the throw. Probably. With, with the way it's thrown, because it's. Such a weird throw that oh, she's... she she does such an ala- this lady does such an elaborate uh, throw build up to the throw. I think th- I think it just sort of throws probably this chick off this girl off yeah this 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 very familiar looking girl who has a red dot on her forehead. So yeah, that's uh... I don't know that's. It's just something. After that, Char goes up to the girl who's sitting on the dock and has a little chat with her. Learns her name is Lala. That's not important. It's not super important. All we really know is that the guy who is her handler is kind of upset with the fact that she's talking to somebody. And then some guys show up and blow their blow up their blow up the guy's boat. Yeah. <laughs> and Char's just like, come here. Okay. He he, ta- he takes them to safety, of the at the construction company, which turns out to not be all that safe, because um, like they're followed, they're followed and like some other rival syndicate or whatever 
wants uh, the girl. Wants the girl. So what happens is the guy's complaining. The guy is complaining and complaining. And then one, uh, one of his subordinates show up. And he's like, oh, thank God you're alive. The chakram but, guy from before. Yeah, the chakram guy from before. He's like, oh, thank God, what took you so long? I'm sorry, your rival made a better offer. What? And the guy's head falls off. <laughs> Dude got sold out. Dude got sold out. Uh, this then leads to a fight between Chakram guy and Char. And Char just dominates. Well, he does. He dodges the Chakram. But then he senses something from the girl, which alerts him to the fact that the Chakram's coming back around. So he barely manages to dodge the Chakram that it's he a, can't see. It's a boomerang. The boomeranging shock, chakra, mm -hmm. and he manages to barely avoid it. it. It tears his vest and goes back to the guy. And Char ha at one point has a shovel. He charges the guy. The dude throws his chakra. Char kind of, kind of deflects it with the shovel, which gets sliced. He and gets then he shoves the. Uh, the point, the he now pointed hat. He, impoint, he impales the guy with the now pointed shovel handle. Yep. And the guy get, and then the guy gets fucked up in the head. Yeah, because the shotgun comes back and <laughs> right in the forehead. So he's dead. And then the other gangsters show up. I think. Yeah, I think that's when the, these guys show up. So then Char sneaks and off, gets in the mobile dozer, and basically fucks them up with it. Almost. I, I think he killed everybody. I, I think this scene is honestly pretty darn good. It's handled very well. The action yeah. is good. So, and then there's a pretty funny joke. He's like, eh, yeah, don't mind if I borrow this. I'll bring it back. As soon so as yeah, I he eat. leaves with uh, Lala. Don't mind if I'll bring this back, boss. Don't worry about it. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Guy's terrified. <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> like, just so much has happened immediately in front of him, and he's... A little dumbstruck, but also kind of glad that he's not dead. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to remember what else happens in this movie. <laughs> there's there's quite a few things that happen in this movie, but there's not like a, a cohesive th plot thread. It's just yeah, a bunch of separate events. <laughs> we're Yeah, we're basically trying to remember most of this movie. Piece, piece everything together. Uh, yeah. Um, let's see. I think, I think at about this point, we get, we, uh, hook back up with Tem, who is meeting with, uh, Gop, one of the guys in the Federation, who has basic, who is showing Tem and some other Federation soldiers the footage of the mobile suits that the, uh, that the, the, the Republic of Xeon is working on developing. Which okay. they got from, uh... So, what happens is... What happens is... The, uh, the Federation get a bunch of footage... From... From Zeon. From... Min from Dr. Minovsky. From specific. Dr. Minovsky specifically. Regarding their mobile suit project. And... Tem... Is... Dumbstruck. He can't... He, he is. He can't believe the he progress they have made. And he's, he's just like, oh, Jesus Christ, what are we going to do? we got to do something. And at about this point, we learn that the Federation has been working on mobile suits, specifically the prototype gun cannons. <laughs> and <laughs> and Tem, Tem, take, Tem takes a look at them. These aren't mobile suits. <laughs> These aren't mobile. These aren't the mobile suits that Minovsky... Hey, don't make fun of that gun cannon. That, I'm, I'm not. That no. gun cannon is fucking that awesome. Gun, that gun cannon is cool. The gun cannon I have above my set, that gun cannon is cool. That gun cannon's awesome. We talked of, we talked in length about how the three Federation designs are amazing. Unfortunately, the the, the initial, prototypes the are first, not... The first roll-out gun cannons are not that impressive, as we will soon <laughs> no. learn. But basically, the gist is that... Uh, Thanks. The footage they got from Minovsky, due to the fact that he's looking to defect. jump ship. <laughs> he's defecting. Dr. Minovsky wants to defect. To the Federation. Yep. So, the Federation has to go, go initiate an operation to recover Dr. Minovsky, 
while he's on the moon. <laughs> you know, I just realized we didn't get very much of Shar in this movie. Not really. We we get enough, yeah. but uh, this is really kind of just a bunch of disparate events that lead up to... This is all kind of filler. Kind of, but it's like filler that fills in the details between... It's world... It's a whole... It, it's, it's This movie is definitely more for the world building. Yeah. And the lead up to... I just realized that. So, 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 what happens is, um, Ron Baral and the, the Black Trio. The I, Black Tri-Stars. The Black Tri-Stars. They're in their, uh, Zaku ones, yeah, I think. They're, they're in their prototypes. The Zaku ones. They're prototypes, yeah. They, they are prototypes, but they're, like, close to the mm -hmm. finalized Zaku ones. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're the ones that they use in the... Original show, yeah? Uh, no, those are those are predominantly Zaku 2s. Okay, <laughs> never mind then. Zaku 2s are the more iconic Zakus. Right. The Zaku 1s kind of lack a lot of that tubing that kind of makes the Zaku 2s awesome. But, um... Nerd talk. <laughs> Look at that, we're 21 minutes in and we're like already like almost done with this. Yeah, this movie does go by pretty damn quick. Shit. Uh, <laughs> so, um... So yeah, we're well, on the moon. Well, okay, so so they're on the moon and they're they're complaining because they're like, where the, the fuck, where the fuck is this new guy? Yeah, the black tristars are complaining that the new guy that who they call Red, pinning that, yeah, ha hasn't uh, joined up with them yet, and they were supposed to have done so already. At least they think so. So they're out looking for him. Meanwhile, some lady named Catherine decides to visit Granada with her escort. Who does a terrible job at hiding the fact that he works for her instead of being, you know, someone who may be amorous towards her? Oh yeah, there's this whole subplot. <laughs> uh, turns out this is actually Cassilia Zabi disguising see, herself. See, I and you know what's funny? I got it right away. I when I first watched this movie, I actually tried to look up who this Catherine character was, and all I really ended up finding out was that there was a character named Catherine in, Catherine in Gundam Wing. <laughs> see, so see, see, I immediately figured out because because uh, my thinking was, oh, it's it's some lady talking to a talking to. Well, actually, no, the facial features actually were, were what tipped me off. Okay. Because it's like, oh, it's Cassilia and blonde hair. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was, I was duped. <laughs> it's a good disguise. It is a good disguise. So, they, uh, spend a little time at a dance club, and then a Zeon soldier comes up to Catherine and tells her something, and then, then they're off. <laughs> so then the ambush begins. So yeah, the uh, Zaku ones go to intercept Minovsky, who is in transport between. Uh, so okay, so yeah, between Granada and Von whole, Brown. There's a whole subplot. There's a whole other subplot going on where, uh, what's the company's name? Anaheim. Anna, where Anaheim has take has taken Minovsky's. Uh, You're right because he's defecting to the Federation, he's, he's, and Anaheim is working with the Federation. Yes. So Anaheim has t procured his services, or so they think. So yeah, so the Zaku twos intercept the transport, trying to get their hands on Manovsky. The Federation swoops in with their um, Iron Brigade, I think they call them. I don't know what the they. Fuck. They definitely use the word Iron, which is which are the uh, early rollout gun cannons, and uh, then we uh, f finally see Red. Oh, by the way, Tim. Tem is in Tem, a, Tem is there, uh, kind of observing the he whole. Wants, he wants. He to wants see. to watch and observe the the situation, and this. Well, I mean, he he knows shit's about to go down. He knows shit's about to go down, and he is concerned for his mentor, Doctor Minovsky. Yeah. But he also wants to see the combat capabilities of both the uh, rollout first rollout gun Zaku, cannons Zaku's. and the Zaku ones. Yeah. And. <laughs> Boy, is there quite a difference in ability. The gun cannons just do not stand a chance, especially once Red gets involved, who we quickly learn is Shar Aznable, now sporting his very, very iconic look. Yeah. 
Oh no, those, those, those gun cannons get fucking slaughtered. <laughs> so it's four. I think it's four against four, and Char takes out it's, him. It's five. Oh yeah, five on because you got Rumble Roll, right, right, the Black Tri Stars, and, and then Char. Char. So it's five on five. No, it's not even five on five. I'm pretty sure there are actually more gun cannons than there are Zaku ones, and it is an utter slaughter. Yeah, okay. Of the Sh- gun cannon, Sh- Char fucking takes out at least two or three of them <laughs> by himself. I'm pretty confident it's more, but <laughs> it's kind of chaotic. And and here's the thing: their mission was to get Doctor Minoski to recover Doctor Minoski and take him back to Zeon. Unfortunately, one of the Black Tri-Stars got a little too ambitious in chasing down one of the gun cannons and taking it out that it that when it when the gun cannon fell, it fell right on top of Dr. Minovsky. I'll say this, Dr. Minovsky, you could have just ran to the left or the right. Come on. <laughs> it's less gravity, he had less control. That's the story I'm going with. <laughs> okay. Fine then. So yeah, Dr. Minovsky is dead. Tem Ray is... Tem, Tem has seen the entire thing. Uh, let's see. So then they... So then this we, we, Cath- cut, ba- we cut back to Catherine Casilia. We know. Yep, yep. He's talking with the mayor of Granada. And uh, then uh, information comes in that Dr. Minovsky is dead. And basically at this so point... Cath- th- and then Casilia just drops all pretenses and says... No, we're, okay, we're invading Granada. We want your support. We want Granada. We want Granada support in this war. And it's like, and the mayor's like, war. The Republic of Zeon hasn't declared war. Uh, and Casilla is like, well, as you will soon learn, we've actually decided to change our name to the Principality of Zeon. <laughs> well, actually, um, well, actually, what happens is is the the mayor already knows about the war. Somebody leaked. Oh. Somebody leaked about the war in Cassilia. Right, because Cassilia never act- actively mentions war. Yeah. So Cassilia, or... Cassilia just drops all pretenses then. Yeah, once once the mayor reveals that he's not going to help in the war, that's when she realizes... I mean, she probably already knew, but that's when she reveals, I never said anything about a war. Well, no, no she doesn't say that yet. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... But basically, uh, once information ma- about... <laughs> Dr. Minovsky's death comes in. The mayor of Granada decides to uh, politely leave the room to go uh, look into this. Yep. And uh, then we learn that uh, Cassilia's escort uh, was very likely the one who leaked the information about the oncoming war. because And he tries to beg for his life and gets shot dead. <laughs> yeah, he kind of deserved it. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> He wasn't even that good a dancer anyway. I mean, God, he, I don't even think he, he really was, even danced. You know, what, you know what? He was cucked. He was cucked. And to make matters worse, before before he gets off, Cassilia basically straight up tells him the Xeon Intelligence Agency has no need for blabbermouths. <laughs> yep. So, that guy's dead. Wasn't very important. Don't worry about it. So the Mayor Granada is traveling. He's traveling by car. Uh, and then a big truck just kind of mows him down, and he gets killed in an explosion, which is explained away as an accident. Quotations. Accident. (laughs) That's what the newspapers are calling it. So, the mayor of Granada is dead, and, uh, uh, the Anaheim and the Federation are having a meet-up to discuss, well, the Zakus are kind of, la la la. Lula. They're thinking of a shelving Thames RX. Pro- so RX so what happens? So what happens is they're like, a bunch of people died because because of your designs. And Thames just like, no, Tem Tem is the one telling them. Well, that. yeah, yeah. Well, Tem's basically saying a bunch of people died because we had faulty we had faulty equipment. We didn't have uh, sufficient equipment. This, these things weren't that well designed. And the guys at Anaheim was like, oh, you're just as much hey, as fault. And hey, Tem- fuck you. You did. You were responsible too. And Tem's like, yep. yeah, 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 I am. What is, what's your point? You're not going to pull money from this project because if you see here, aha, I got- have pretty much completely designed this thing. Look at the, look at the, this glorious CGI I have shown you of this RX-78. Yes, we're calling it a Gundam. 
So, and I'm pretty confident this this subplot started earlier in the movie. Yeah. But at one point, Char's at home and Haro kind of uh, rolls. You mean Amaro? is at home. Who did I say? Char. <laughs> Wow, Char and Hal. Is at home. Is at home. I'm done with you. Uh, just that's kind it. of. That's it. This podcast's over. <laughs> this podcast's over. I can't deal with you. I thought we were professionals. <laughs> can't even remember names. Anyway, Amaro's at home. Haro kind of rolls down the hallway and accidentally ends up opening Tem's door. Tem the door to Tem's. Tem the door. Workroom. <laughs> Tem's <laughs> door. Tem, his dad's door. And Jesus. Amaro is a bit it out. Amaro is a bit surprised that it wasn't locked and decides to take a look and ends up finding the plan, his father's plans. And uh, he's again, a, I, he becomes obsessed. He, with he does it. become a bit obsessed with it, staying up late to kind of look him over. Even, so even falling asleep in class. A funny scene. There he's is a sleep, funny he's scene. He's asleep in class. And he's woken up by the teacher. And he's and he's so tired. <laughs> like, just so... Welcome home, Dad! Welcome home, Dad! Because he tells the teacher he yelled at him. <laughs> Amaro, no sleeping in class. Welcome home, Dad! Because he's used to that sort of shit. <laughs> Which really, really oh, puts down a which really, really throws down a whole lot of psychological... Uh, yeah, this, this movie really kind of helps to further establish just the kind of parenting Tim gives to his own son. And I mean, if we're talking about the third movie, you know... Yeah. Kick-ass, kick, kick Amaro! You got that! Did you install that thing I sent you? <laughs> uh, You're the best! <laughs> around! <laughs> I honestly wasn't sure you would go there, but then you went there. <laughs> Nothing's ever going to keep you down. Uh, Amaro keeps staying home, and uh, Frau is kind of concerned for him and offers to bring him lasagna on, like, Christmas night or New Year's. Dude, lasagna is some... so good. Lasagna is so good. It, it, it's at this point, it's at this point, the war is officially on. Yeah, the war is officially on. We get, we get uh, Kai yeah. show up at some point. We get in the now. Who's kind of picking on Amaro and Frau because they're hanging out together. So, yeah, which is fucking weird. It, it's really just to establish that he's kind of a jerk, which... Which character? Kai. Oh, yeah, Kai's kind of a dick. <laughs> he gets better. <laughs> yeah. Just watch the original series, yeah. Yeah, he gets better. Uh, so, but yeah, Amaro is so wrapped up in looking into his dad's stuff that uh, when Frau comes in on bringing him the lasagna she she's concerned because she's seen the news about the war that's been going up that's been brewing and uh amro just kind of is nonchalant about the whole thing until frau kind of breaks down and is like amro there's a war going on <laughs> it's just kind of Honestly, kind of comes out of nowhere. It does kind of come out of nowhere, but you can kind of sense that this has kind of been building in her mind that to this point that uh, yeah that Amro is so disconnected when the war when the 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 solar system is on the brink of the first space war. There's more wars. Oh no! <laughs> Do you not remember Zeta Gundam? You know, you and I got into it. Decent argument here. Where they called okay in universe, they called the the first the, the space war, the first space war. They called it the the worst tragedy in human history, and I got into a pretty lengthy argument about why I think the Holocaust will never be would would even in that universe would never be topped as the worst tragedy. Thing is, the Holocaust did happen in that universe. It did happen. <laughs> I mean, they do reference Adolf Hitler. In well, the that's third no, movie. but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying, even in that universe, the Holocaust would have been worse than the first space war. Yeah, but the one year war killed half of the total human population. As to be expected with war. <laughs> Literally half of the human population. Did they have census numbers from before and after? 
Probably not. So maybe there's. So maybe it was worse. Maybe it was less. <laughs> you don't know that. <laughs> this is the debate we got into, and which we're now getting into because we don't want to talk any more about the movie. I want to talk more about the movie. <laughs> I do too because there is a bit more that happens but basically at this point we get then treated to a, a basically a slideshow of the events that happen happen at the start of the war Granada is invaded taken over rather handily uh what else the moon gets taken over Does... Granada is on the moon okay yeah the, the moon's invaded well Granada is invaded not von Braun that's a diff that is a different city von Braun also gets invaded no it doesn't it's just Granada. You shut your whore mouth. I think there's a battle over Von, above Von Braun. Yeah, there, so so there's like shits uh, on, shits on. There's like war, war spaceships fighting. Uh, and, and mobile suits are there. And to think, only a few months later, only a few months later, the the. Z the Principality of Zeon would get their absolute asses handed to them. Dude, spoilers. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, Whoa. this is... I don't know that. I I thought everybody watched their podcast. <laughs> Oof. But, so, yeah, this this bit right at the end is basically just the lead-up to the next couple of movies and what happens in them. So, um, yeah, that was Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin for Evil there's also, Destiny. There's, there's also a fluff scene between Lala and Char in which they basically say, Hey, I love you. Love you, too. Kind of. I don't think that's actually what they say, but... <laughs> we'll go with it. Because you know what? I It really doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't. Not really. See, Lala's... <sighs> Lala just gets introduced in this movie, which is fine. And you know what? You know what's kind of sad about it is... Because of how the, the original movie was... Or how the original series was, Lala doesn't get introduced until late into that. Very late. Very late into that series. So, Lala's just sort of a throwaway character in this movie. Cause she's this, it, it does do a decent job of introducing her, what her backstory is, and how she met Char. But otherwise, she is kind of extra in this movie. That, you know, now that we've t we're talking about it, now that we're talking about it, God, I don't know if it is better than Artesia Sorrow. <laughs> God damn, we're only thirty-seven minutes in, and usually we're, we we take. I know the, the the this movie has a lot of really great scenes. The problem is, is that those great scenes don't necessarily make they, a very good story. Okay, this movie, this movie has a bad sense of pace and no quiet time. I think. Just kind of a lot of stuff happens. Some really great scenes like uh, Char's fight with the Chakram guy and the first mobile suit I'm, fight. I'm trying to on think of an, I'm trying to think of an analog to this. <sighs> One's not really coming to my head. I. It would be like aliens. Hear me out here. If you took out all the character building scenes. Added, only, kept only the scenes with the aliens, and removed all of the scenes where they're traveling. And it's just boom, 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 boom. Action, set piece, set piece, set piece, and it just goes through it at a at a brisk pace. And yeah, this out is of there, a lot you... of action scenes, a lot of uh, political moments, a couple bit of character development moments, but ultimately, this movie just kind of it's it's the Phantom Menace cut down into an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Lots of interest. Like not not to talk bad about it. I mean, Phantom Menace has a lot of fucking bad moments. Jar Jar Binks. We, we'll like, cover those. We'll at cover some those. Point. <laughs> well, my my point is, it has a lot of interesting stuff happening. It just it, if you chop, but if you put it down to one hour, it's not gonna stick. Yeah, there's just so much happening in this movie, but not a whole lot of it feels like it really matters. Like I feel, I honestly feel that the only two two parts of this movie that really feel like they matter are the uh, Char and Lala scenes, and then the moon fight where Doctor Minofsky dies. Yeah. Other than that, there's 
literally nothing else. I mean, there's Tem int- basically revealing, Ha, I've completely designed this mobile... Ha, mobile watch this! I made a Gundam while you all weren't looking. <laughs> now watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. <laughs> it's done! <laughs> it's, it's built! Amro, get in there! Show them what they can do! <laughs> this movie has great scenes. I'm the greatest dad ever. But like I said, great... Just having great scenes doesn't make it a good movie. And this movie is not terrible, but it could have been a lot better. It's not bad, but it's certain. It's not bad, but I don't think it's very good. I, I honestly kind of feel that it's the worst of at least the original four origin movies. Oh, wait, there are worse than this? I, I actually don't remember the other two enough to Oof. really say. I think this might be the worst of the entire origin series, but. The, the other two are good, though, by the way. Okay. I mean, this is, like I said, this isn't bad. I just don't think it's very good. Yeah, personally, I'd give this movie a 6 out of 10. You know... Uh, you know, I don't even... I don't even know what I would rate this movie. <laughs> Part of me wants to rate it, like, a 6. Part of me wants to rate it a 7. Because, I mean, the action's good. Right, that's kind of what keeps it at a six to me. But if it didn't have the co- the awesome scenes that I do enjoy, I might give it a five then again, or four. Then again, it does does have Dozel's weird boner, so I, <laughs> so I got to give it a seven. <laughs> got to give it a seven off of that. You held me at gunpoint. I have the weirdest boner right now. <laughs> Marry me! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> but I had somebody had to do it. <laughs> somebody had to say it. It wasn't going to be him. Uh, yeah, no, because that didn't even cross my mind. I kind of forgot that that scene happened when I was rethinking about this movie today in preparation for this podcast. I mean, we saw it like a week ago, too. Not not even a week ago. We saw it, what, was it Friday? What was it? I think it was Saturday. I think we saw it Saturday. I don't know. Yes, would have been Saturday because we got because we got home from the Minecraft session. Yep. Yep. Yes, we play Minecraft. Don't judge us. Stop judging us. God damn. <laughs> the awkward silence. How dare you? <sighs> this this is why we don't invite you over. <laughs> You're always judging us, viewer. <laughs> And or listener. Yeah. I mean, there's not much to view other than the sweet poster. In the YouTube version, if, if this ever goes up on a podcast uh, site, it's... Uh... Well, then it just renders the point new. <laughs> That's why I have to mention it. <laughs> Thunderbolt Bandit Flower. Yeah, that one's... It's a picture of a priest. Yeah. That is, that is a thing. Is this if, is this the alternative universe it, where, where the Catholic Church makes mobile suits and they wage war against it, the Muslims? It, it makes sense in the context of the movie, but that's a story for another time. Actually, no. I think I think my version's worse. <laughs> <laughs> the, ca- oh, the Catholic Church builds mobile suits th- so they can hide the truth. We know what truth. I almost feel like that is a plot for something. Jesus Christ. Like, I'm almost convinced that actually is a plot for something. Maybe not Gundam related. Maybe, I don't know, Xenosaga? I've never played that Fuck. game. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> no, that sounds... I was going to say that sounds a bit like... Uh... It sounds like somebody took that idea already. <laughs> well, it sounds like a Final Fantasy VII thing. Because, you know, the whole company built around it... Hiding the truth from the modern citizen. Yeah, I know, but I think Xenosaga as a whole. We're, 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 we've gone. we're rambling at this point. We've gone wildly. We, we... What's next? What's next for us? Bang, bang. Yeah, yes. Not shitty, shitty, bang, bang. Uh-huh. Although, so at some point, I'd like to do that. Alright. At some point. It's a classic movie. But yeah, I know. Next up, we're going to start shooting some stuff. Uh, until next time, this has been me, Protomet. This is my recycled balls. I can't believe we haven't gone 
over an hour yet. Yeah. This makes this makes me sick. This is a all time, all time episode, shortest episode probably. Uh, we might have shorter, but uh, to be fair, we didn't really have a whole lot to say about this one. <sighs> I mean, we've already done the outro, and we're still grousing about that. <laughs> we should we should probably just end it here. I don't want to. <laughs> Okay. I refuse. That's it. We're going to ramble. <laughs> We're going to ramble. We're going like, to do some wrestling talk. Oh, yeah. Let's, let's talk some wrestling. We can, sure. Get some, get, a some bonus. Bo get some bonus. Let's do some bonus. That was NXT. Um, That was fine. How was the Royal Rumble? The Royal Rumble was degrees of great. <laughs> Dude, I don't care what anybody says. The men's Rumble was amazing. Even the Brock section, okay? The Brock section is designed... To get Drew McIntyre over. I, I didn't like the Brock section for the most part. In the But in the context... In, in the context, I can kind of see the appeal to it, but for me personally... And what, happened, and, and what makes it even better is, is the week before, on Raw, Paul Heyman was like, Ah, who wants to step up and face Brock? Who thinks they can take Brock? Ricochet! And Ricochet comes out and he's like, I can take you. <laughs> and then he gets fucking, curb stomped. Fucking... Doesn't get curb stomped. Well, he he, he gets he, kicked he in the is, balls. He is this. So Ricochet is the small scrawny dude. If you haven't seen wrestling, and you if you've you've heard of Brock Lesnar, if you've seen any MMA, you've heard of Brock Lesnar, <laughs> and you know what Brock Lesnar looks like. You can just the name. You can imagine what Brock Lesnar looks like in your head. He's also, a, also, if you're on the YouTube version of this, uh, I just put up the poster for uh, Royal Rumble. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, so bonus time. Bonus time. Brock Lesnar is this fucking massive. He, he looks like he he looks like a roided freak, but he only uses the steroids once. But he is this fucking monster, and Ricochet is like this six foot one, two hundred pound dude. He's he's not very big. He's he's fairly he's fairly tiny in comparison to Brock. In comparison to Brock. <laughs> and, and, and Brock. And he's like, I'm not scared of you, Brock. Are you scared of me? And Brock kicks him in the dick. He's like, not scared. <laughs> so at the Rumble, Ricochet shows... Like fif 15 30. guys Brock goes up against. And most of them get tossed out before a second person can so another Brock, person Brock, come Brock in. Throw, so the Royal Rumble, 30 men. It's a 30-man Royal Rumble. Comes at, Each person comes in at inter intermittent intervals. Code word for whenever the last spot is. And and uh, Brock throws out thirteen people in a row. Practically, <laughs> starting with Elias, who do, who has a pretty good spot. Keith Lee was probably the biggest one. Well, that was the first one where two, where more than two people were in no, the ring. No, no, nope, no, nope, nope. It was Brock. It was it was Kofi Ray and Big E. That oh, the, those, that those the, got those were the okay. Th they were the first ones and. Brock eventually disposed of them after they smartly... Like, all at once, practically. After they smartly teamed up on him. <laughs> and almost succeeded. Almost. So, and Keith Lee comes out. That was a disappointment for me, personally, because I really felt they those three especially needed to get revenge on Brock Lesnar for yep. the shit he pulled this year. Especially <laughs> Kofi. <laughs> Poor Kofi. Loses in six seconds. And people are still salty about it. And I just drink their teeth. Let me just... <laughs> Let me just drink that he is. <laughs> so then, so then Keith Lee comes out, and if you've seen Keith Lee, Keith Lee is bigger than he's not. He's not more muscly than Brock. He's just bigger than Brock. He impressed me at uh, Survivor Series. Yeah, Keith, Keith Lee is a beast, and he 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 had a pretty good showing on NXT today. Today, yeah, yeah I agree. He's he's great. He's Mark Henry if he if. He's 2011 Mark Henry, but like 10 years younger. Almost. I don't know. So yeah, he's, so, he's so facing Keith, off against Lesnar. So Le and, and Keith Lee is like the first guy Lesnar's actually like, oh shit, I should, yeah, I'm worried about this one. <laughs> I don't know about this guy. And then Braun comes in and fucks that up. <laughs> and then they start fighting and Brock eliminates those two. Then, then Shelton Benjamin comes out. And Shelton Benjamin... And Brock Lesnar, they are old friends 
from the University of Minnesota. Both of them are Minnesota boys, as far as I'm concerned. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, so that's why you like sucking their, his cock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'll suck anybody's dick, damn it. I'm my own man. That's that's no gonna, judging, no judging. That's that, that's not taken out of context either. <laughs> that's that's rather literal. So yeah, Shelton Benjamin. Shelton Benjamin and Brock is like, hey buddy, let's team up, you and me. We'll be the last two. Don't worry about it. And Shelton's like, all right, let's wait for the next guy. And, Brock and then just, Brock tosses him out. <laughs> Brock tosses him out. And he's like, you dumbass. <laughs> Love you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> So, Ricochet comes out, and Brock's like, Ah, hey, it's this scrawny fuck again. Let's beat the shit out of him. I'll take my time with him. And then Drew McIntyre comes out, and Drew's taller than Brock. Because Brock's like 6'4", and Drew's like 6'8". And Drew's a fucking tall, muscly dude, and he's Scottish, and he's great. And they're staring down, and then Ricochet hits yeah. Lesnar in the balls. So, yeah, so Rick and Ricochet kicks Brock in the balls, and, and uh, this gives... Drew McIntyre the opportunity to toss Brock out of the ring. Yeah, to kick Brock out of the ring. And Brock's eliminated from the Rumble, so we get the Rumble proper. But Drew McIntyre basically becomes the next big star. Po poised to be the next big star. I, and mind you, Brock was the WWE Championship uh, champion in this match. So uh, it didn't matter to him whether he won or lost. He's still going to Mania. But it's all certain that Drew McIntyre is going to face Brock at Mania, and he's going to win. He better. He better. Otherwise, that renders this whole damn thing pointless. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Corbin, who had previously, earlier in the night, gotten yep. his ass handed to him by Roman Reigns, got eliminated before Roman Reigns even showed up. Yep. To that's, the that's a thing that the happened. Rumble. That's a thing that <laughs> happened. AJ Styles got hurt, by the way. He actually got hurt. Oh. And that, that's why he was eliminated before the rest of his buddies came in. Mm. So, he was eliminated. And uh, there's also the other big, big important news. Um, Edge came back. Ooh. Yeah. I, I have no... Uh, I have no opinion on this. I This was before I got back into yeah. wrestling. So. <laughs> before you got back into wrestling. I was when I was real little. <laughs> okay. No, Edge, Edge came back. That was a nice surprise. It was a feel-good moment. He almost won. He ended up being third. He ended up, he ended up in the Mr. Perfect position back in the 2002 Rumble. Because Mr. Perfect had come back to the company. And he had been there for a long time. Had retired. And then came back in to wrestle, and he was the second to last to be eliminated, and so was Edge. So that's a that's a good feel-good moment for him, and he's back. He's back full-time now. Edge. Edge is. Because he wrestled, he wrestled on Raw. So, there is that. Uh, so, long story short, Drew McIntyre won. Drew McIntyre won. Also on the Women's Rumble, Charlotte won. I, I thought... I honestly, I'm going to say this. I thought the women's royal. The Rumble, women's rumble was a bit better. It was better. I, I, like I, I, I also feel that the second half of the men's royal rumble was better than the first, so, in my opinion. So, my only complaints with royal rumble, God, <laughs> I mean, it's only been 15 minutes, but we've talked more about the rumble than we have the actual movie. Sorry, I don't even think it's been 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, we we. I love I love Drew. Drew's great. <laughs> but my only complaints my only complaints about the Rumble was Shotzi Blackheart not eliminating Shayna Bla Shayna Baszler because they've got a story going on on NXT. I don't know if you saw the Shotzi. I sh saw that. Yeah. Okay. That name's actually a reference to uh, Shotzi Blackheart. That's a reference to Joan Jett, I believe. I think. Um, well, at least that's what they were saying. Yeah. Um, and the rumble. <laughs> yeah, the reference to... Uh, who was the uh, second second woman in... Uh, what was her name? From NXT? Fuck, can't remember. The long... The long break? Oh, Bianca Belair. Yeah! Had a, Bianca Belair had a good showing. She eliminated... She, oh, I absolutely enjoyed that. I, she and Shayna both eliminated eight people. <laughs> 
fantastic. <laughs> yep. That's how you get somebody over. You eliminate five plus people. When she first came in and I saw that long braid, I was like, oh, this is... I felt that was probably a detriment to her. She used it effectively. <laughs> yeah, her... Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like Bianca. I don't have an opinion on her one way or another. I still feel she did, had a good showing. Yep. It's, it's perfectly acceptable. Uh, my only complaints... Shotzi not eliminating uh, Shayna. Uh, let's see here. Asuka not beating Becky. That's probably the biggest thing out of all of that. And That wasn't even in the, in the Rumble proper. That was its no. own match. <laughs> yep, that was its own match. And Lacey not beating Bayley because that's a thing that should have happened because she is red hot and she should have won. So that's my complaint. But if we get Charlotte uh, Becky again, eh. If we get Charlotte Bailey, that'd be more interesting for Mania. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a Mania episode. Maybe. Be uh, it'd be interesting. Let's briefly talk about some of the other matches outside of uh, the Becky no. Asuka one. What other matches were there? Uh, let's see. There was uh, the Falls Count Anywhere the Falls match Ca between Roman Reigns and, Cor Cor and Corbin, Corbin, which... which I uh, wasn't really a fan of that storyline, especially when Corbin tried to interfere in the whole Fiend storyline that was also going on. That one, was, that was stupid. I haven't liked the story since they did the dog food angle, which is fucking dumb. Yeah. Oh, we're going to dump dog food on Roman Reigns as he's handcuffed to the ring post. Oh, that'll be funny. Let's do it to Kofi Kingston, too. Why? I don't. None of that makes sense, you know. I mean, I get the whole Corbin trying to establish his dominance sort of thing, but... Eh. Yeah. I kind of had... Yeah. Let's see. Um, let's see, I think then it was the... There was a, a decent uh, uh, moment in that match, though, when uh, Roman shoved Corbin into one of the porta potties Oh, yeah, the porta potty And then it's the one of the commentators set, meant as during while all this was going on, mentioned the word throne. I was like, eh. Ha. Ah. And then Roman tipped the porta potty on its side. <laughs> yeah, that With was... Corbin still in it. <laughs> that was pretty good. And then I... And then that's about where I kind of stopped paying attention and was just... Oh, God. Something else. <laughs> you were in the bathroom when that all happened, too. Last, last three minutes. Oh, my God. Bray Wyatt versus Daniel Bryan. What a shit match. But that match had... Was so much better than it had any right to be and that's all because of Bray Wyatt uh, not Bray Wyatt, because of <laughs> Daniel Bryan Daniel Bryan is the greatest wrestler of this generation, bar none followed, I'm, I'm not going followed to... closely by AJ Styles and when he wants to, Shinsuke Nakamura and 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 somebody else Drew <laughs> Pro probably Drew McIntyre I'd say is number four uh, a lot of times with these uh, wrestling pay-per-views, especially now that I'm actually watching them, the deciding factor f for me ends up being if a fiend, the Fiend has a match, regardless of how well they go, because I actually like that storyline. I just... Here's my... Ma matches aside, I think the storyline is great. <laughs> I think my problem with it... What? The biggest problem with The Fiend is it's an interesting character, but Jesus Christ is Bray not a good wrestler. And that's what sort of... His wrestling style is slow, plodding, punch-kicky, as we call it. It's very brawling, but not even like in an interesting way. Yeah. Fuck. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, so Seamus and Shorty G... And that happened on the pre-show, didn't that it? That happened on the pre-show. So I missed that completely. And Andrade and Humberto Carrillo had eight. That, <clears throat> yeah, that's I, also pre-show. That was a fucking stellar match, by the way. Uh, um, let's see. What else? No, what those were all the matches. Bailey and Lacey Evans. We we just touched on that. I, I it, ha it went by so fast I completely missed that you had even mentioned it. Yep. <laughs> you might as well just put a tag... In the, in the YouTube video that it's also a Royal Rumble. Yeah, I'll recap. just be like, plus Royal Rumble 2020. <laughs> plus Royal Rumble 2020, yeah. So, yeah, that was... I mean, I wouldn't mind doing, doing like, a, doing a wrestling podcast. I'm sure there's plenty of people who would want to listen to 
people's yeah, thoughts. We could probably on. even get Brian in on it. Yeah. yeah. He's nice. This is an get, open invitation, Brian. Get our tank. <laughs> get tank in here, Brian. Doesn't fucking matter. Everybody knows our names. I mean, goddamn, my, our, young, my, our youngest brother fucking said my name out loud on the live stream I was doing oh, the dude. other day. He was like, hey, Tanner. He's like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm trying to craft a persona and you're ruining the illusion. <laughs> you're try I'm trying to craft a persona and you're psycho boldness. <laughs> and you're ruining it. I might as well just kick you in the knee. <laughs> so yeah, Tank, that uh, this is an open invitation for uh, coming in on the podcast for whatever the next pay-per-view is. <laughs> next? Ah, uh, no, I'd say we just do WrestleMania okay. next when, okay. we, when we get to it. All right. So yeah, fa that... fast lane, yeah, fast lane, or b b fucking break. I don't know what the next one. Fast lane's probably the next one. It's, for, it's a B pay per view. There's nothing important. Last year's one was all right. It had Kofi Mania finally getting his main event shot. But other than that, uh... and then Brock Lesnar took it away in six seconds. He had a good reign. He had a very good reign. Kofi I, had a good reign. I liked but... I liked Kofi's story. But it was but it was time. It was time to let it go. I wish that it would have been more than a wet fart. <laughs> what? What can you do? All right. So, yeah, we finally breached an hour. I think now it's finally time we actually end this. <laughs> okay. I mean, we already did the outro. Yeah. So, um, bye! <laughs> bye!